Okay guys, welcome back to part two of my Chainsaw Reactions video. These are video clips from the internet that I'm just reacting to, trying to hopefully explain to people who might not understand what's going on, or just having a bit of a laugh as it is whilst to watch them. So, here we go. Dude in a very windy tree, with no helmet on. Oh my God. Big. He's just really going around there. Um, pick a better day. Like, there's so many people who are like, ah, yeah, I'll just go climb the tree, it'll be fine and stuff. Wind is like one of the biggest dangers. Rain, not such a problem. I climb in the rain all the time. Sun is more of a problem than the rain, I think. Getting sunburn or sunstroke in a tree really sucks. But the wind, ah, oh, man, just being blown and buffeted around. I did a job in January this year where I was tied into one stem and I had to climb a separate stem of a tree and um, the wind really got up. I got the job done, but it was horrible. I was stood, I was stood in the pub later on. I went for a beer and I was just stood there and I was just doing this. And it was like I'd just been on a boat that I'd been on choppy seas and I was just, the, the world just would not stop swaying. It was just horrible proper planning and preparation and check the weather, check what it's gonna do. Generally, if the wind's above 25 miles an hour, that means you're gonna get gusts of about 40 miles an hour. And if you're climbing a spindly little ash tree or something like that, I'm just like, nah, man, let's, let's, do, let's do it a different day. Let's go split some wood today or something like that. Five out of 10, just, you know, it was, it was, a, guy, it was a guy in a windy tree. It wasn't that amazing, but it was, it was kind of funny. So yeah, next one. Okay, that's interesting. So <laughs> that's he's just fine. taking a stick off of the top of this big pole and it's just stopped halfway. He's got a really nice suit for the window here. And that's just gone to the rope and it's for ah, okay, it's fine. So what he's done there is um uh, he's done everything right. He's done everything absolutely right. And if anything, he's just been really cautious there. Correct me if I'm wrong. Should there, is, is there something he should have done better? I don't, I don't know, because it looks like he's rigged in fine. He's got the, the rope going uh, up to it for the ground worker and stuff. He's put a face cut in on one side. He started cutting in from the other side and it started to tip and then it's just stopped, which is really unusual. And he's clearly there. You can see him like, huh. Okay, so he just starts his saw back up and he puts through the rest of it and it goes. A solid seven out of 10. Good technique, but a very strange circumstance where it's kind of just like gravity just turned itself off for a minute and it just sort of stopped mid fall. What do we got next? Taking down some big stems. Is it going to crush something? No, it's just setting a cannonball. <laughs> Just like, oh God, is it gonna crush a chipper? Or is it gonna crush someone's car or something like that? And no, it just fired a little thing. And I've seen that happen. I've seen that happen once or twice, but it does happen. And, and the thing is, someone probably put that like chunk of wood there for a good reason, which was to try and cushion the impact of this great big pole coming down. And it's just the magical dance of physics have just joined it and like fired it away at the ground worker. And the 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 best thing there, I think, is the dude laughing as he dodges out of the way of it. Because, no, again, it's a good video if no one gets hurt. I don't like videos where people get hurt and stuff. That's not, that's, that's, that's not cool. Seven out of 10. Yeah, seven out of 10 for that one. No one's yet beaten the squirrels at eight out of 10 because, you know, flying land mammals, that's just cool. Are squirrels mammals? Are squirrels mammals? Are they mammals? They give birth to live young, don't they? Google it. Is a squirrel a mammal or is it a rodent? Next one, we've got um, some up a tree with a panther bar. Um, zip line there. Pushing, is that a top he's pushing out there? Looks all nice. Top's gone down and flattened someone's fence. Oh no. Oh. Yeah, because you can see the line where he's just been zip lining stuff. Dude. He's not clipped that. Dude, way. I'm sorry, man. I, uh, I, I just, I spaced. I didn't clip it on. I'm, oh, is that Jake I Rogers? Just, I, I went to zip line the top and I just. I'm like, it pretty is, tired. It's, yeah, it's almost that's dark. Jacob Rogers. That's and guilty. I, just, uh, I wasn't paying attention. And just like, okay, we're almost done. We're almost done. 
and I didn't even clip it on the line, so I just topped it. <laughs> just, just sent it right on the dude's fence. Oh, no. <laughs> For those people that don't know, Jacob Rogers, uh, guilty of treason on YouTube and Instagram. I've never talked to the guy, I met the guy, but he's a really, really nice guy and a really talented arborist and tree climber, along with like August Hunnicky and um, a few other guys, is sort of like one of the top ranked kind of like YouTubers for tree climbing and stuff. And he just makes fun, happy videos. His crews always seem to be having a really good time with him and he always seems to be having fun and stuff. This is a video that I think I've seen before actually, but it's really, it's really nice. It's really good that someone with as much skill and experience because he's been doing this for at least like 10 years now someone like him has got that much experience and he's just like yeah even the pros can make really really basic mistakes which is really really humbling and really heartwarming and is really important for everyone to know because i mean i've been that guy who the first time not the, not the first time i climbed a tree but the second time i climbed a tree it was a nightmare, I remember. For, well, the second time I climbed a tree on like a professional job, um, it was just a nightmare and I was getting stuff wrong all the time. And I was like, oh my God. And I just remember thinking like, the pros don't do this, you know. And some of the, sure, some of the mistakes I was making, probably the pros don't do. But I mean, like, Jacob Rogers, he's like Mr. Chainsaw. And the poor guy, as you can see, like he said, he's just tired. He's just tired, it's the end of the day just spaced and forgot to clip this line. And again, thank God it didn't land on a house or a person. Even if it was a house, it could be repaired. If it was a person, that's a lot worse. Um, but he just dumped it on someone's fence, which is not good. But the important like lesson there is that it happens to the best of us. It really does. And I mean, hey, I come from outside of tree climbing. I come from the world of professional um, cycling. So I do, I'm a trials rider and I've crashed during shows and stuff before and I've seen other people do it and I've had, I've always been like, guys, it happens. Like it really happens to, you know, everyone and anyone. I think it's really like big and humbling of someone like Jacob Rogers to be like, yeah, look, this is, this is what, this is how the pros do. This is how we screw up. It happens. Um, so yeah, I think that one gets an eight out of 10 just because it's such a high profile climber, someone that so many people, me included, really looks up to, who's saying stuff goes wrong sometimes. Right, next one. <laughs> I've seen this video a few times and it's just, oh my God, let's just pause it there for a second. What? <laughs> right, okay. Um, I'd love for someone else to do a list of all the things that are wrong with this. I'm going to try and see. So, first of all, uh, well, okay, the, about the one thing I can see that they're doing right is to cut a decent tree, they've got a decent chainsaw. Um, that looks, I mean, I'm pretty certain that's still, might be a 461 or a 261, I'm not sure. But it's, they've got a professional, it's a professional arborist chainsaw. So I'm looking for the positives here. They've got the right tool for the job. How they are using it is <laughs> it's just... First of all, um, moving a chainsaw backwards and forwards like this does not make the chainsaw cut quick. <laughs> um, if you need to do, if, if you feel like you need to push the chainsaw back and forwards like that because it's not cutting quick enough, what you actually probably need to do is to sharpen your chain. Um, <laughs> it's not a handsaw. A handsaw, yes, you have to move back and forwards like that because the serrated teeth need to cut through the wood like that. A chainsaw doesn't do that. The whole point of a chainsaw is you hold it still and the chain moves. The chain is the thing that's moving at very high speeds. You moving it back and forwards like that is gonna do nothing. Just bring it straight down or you push it straight through. Basic uh, lesson on the anatomy of a chain. A chain has basically got lots of little hooks. That's a very bad way of describing it, but it's, it, it'll do for now. And the hook is coming along and it's just scratching off bits of the wood as it goes through. So it's peeling off bits. And because there's about, I don't know, uh, two dozen of those hooks on each chain, 
and it's moving at several hundred or if not thousand RPM. It's doing it very quickly. So it's basically, it's like a, it's like a plane, basically. It's just planing off little bits of wood, but it's doing little bits, but really quickly. So again, if you're cutting with a chainsaw, you just push the chainsaw straight down or straight in, or even if you bore it in long ways and stuff, you don't saw it back and forth. <laughs> the second thing, is you got this horrible leaning tree there. Um, and what he's doing is he's just cutting, he's just cutting straight in from the back. So that is, I mean, I'm surprised that at the point he's at there, it hasn't already barber chaired, because that's what it's gonna do. You've got this massive amount of weight like this. And if you just cut through that, then it's gonna split up the middle and barber chair like that again. And I'm so surprised it hasn't happened by that point. It may be, Maybe actually there isn't, because I can't see, all I can see is that frame of it. Maybe there is only another 10 feet of log there. Uh, and he's just cutting that bit off. Um, what he should have done is put a face cut, like a Pac-Man mouth, in the front of it. So you put a face cut in, so you put your bottom cut and the next cut. So you've got a nice big gob like that, because when the tree moves it'll close like that so you're giving the tree room to move over that bit there the, the fact that he's i think he's standing on the lower bit to the railing so he can get a bit further over it that's dangerous i don't know what the other dude behind him is doing that seems just you know just hug, like hugging his bro like if that's it like cool i mean that's in i can't i can't imagine anywhere that that is a uh, a thing that you're required to do I'm, I'm guessing he's there to stop him maybe falling over the railing like that into the what is that water below it maybe that's what he's there for um if that was the case i would probably i honestly probably would just wear my harness and clip myself to the railing um but sure okay if you want your buddy to do that and then the next thing which is probably one of the most important things is the kind of ppe they're wearing and the really interesting thing here is that the dude who's got the chainsaw is wearing a mask so he's wearing a, a, a mask to protect himself from, I'm guessing, coronavirus or anything else like that. So he's conscious enough to worry about, you know, the air that he's breathing in. Apart from, there is in no way there's a two meter gap between those two dudes. <laughs> just, why is he wearing a mask? And the other dude isn't wearing a mask and he stood that close to him. So yeah, that's, that's definitely a, a still chainsaw. Um, and it's gonna have a decibel rating of about 110 which is about the same kind of noise that a Slipknot concert makes. So it's gonna be loud, incredibly loud. And if you're using that semi-regularly, which I'm guessing this guy isn't, because he doesn't look like he knows what he's doing, no offense, but it just doesn't, um, then he's gonna damage his ears really quickly. Like it's, if you've never used a chainsaw professionally, they are so loud. Um, you should at the very least have earplugs in. If not, you want ear defenders. And also they're not wearing any helmets. Helmets are important because if you're cutting a tree and the tree starts to move like that, you can dislodge, you don't know what's above you, you can dislodge branches, they can come down and land on your head. They haven't got any eye protection or anything, which is, you know, not everyone uses eye protection, but they haven't got, by the looks of things, I'm guessing those yellow overalls aren't type one or type two or class A or class C chainsaw trouser spec. They're not gonna stop a chainsaw if the dude accidentally bumps it into his leg. Oh God. Yeah, either way. Um, for comic value, I'm gonna give that uh, a, a seven out of 10. For good chainsaw use, uh, a generous one, because there's so much wrong with that and there's so many dangerous things that are happening there. Just, oh man. <laughs> okay, on to the next one. So, uh, Okay, dude in a tree, he's cutting through. Uh, oh, that's so that's what I was talking about. That's what I was talking about earlier. So the dude just barber chaired. He just barber chaired a piece of wood in the tree. And that is, that looks like, I mean, one, he looks like he knows what he's doing, but also he looks like he was quite surprised by it. What he's done there is, I couldn't quite, it didn't look like there was a face cut in that. Maybe he was just hoping to cut through it and it would just peel off and go that way. But because it's standing upright, the angles are a bit weird. Um, I don't know, I'd have to I'd have to look more at his setup there. He's so lucky it just carried on and went that way and didn't come over and clonk on him. Because again, like with the dude earlier who did that big barber chair, you've suddenly immediately got this massive weight of wood 
above your head. Like it's up there and it, it, it's going to go whichever way gravity is going to take it. And depending on where the, so you, you tip the end of it up, you've got the, the rest of it over there. Like, yeah, sure, it's probably going to end up on the ground, but where is it going to hit on the way down to the ground? Yeah, so scary. And um, again, it looked like he was planning to just push through it, but it just snapped too quickly. So, you know, a really good lesson in like, maybe he could have taken a bit more off the top first, so there wasn't so much weight on it. Maybe he needed to put a bigger gob in it on the other side, so it was just a little zip through to get to it on there. Because if you take stuff out of the, if you take stuff out of the compression side, so which is the side of the stem, which has got the most weight on it, yeah, because it's being compressed. If you take stuff out of that, you're okay until it pinches your chainsaw bar. You've got to be really careful with that. But if you take stuff out of this side, that's under tension. And when the tension breaks, that's when you get that barber chair thing. So, yeah, um, 7 out of 10 for that one. Again, because the dude is all right and because it was uh, quite educational. because It was a near miss, which is what you really always want to see in these videos. You want to see cool, fun, near misses where people didn't get dead. That's what you want. Okay, so that was me reacting to some chainsaw videos. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you want to see parts three, four, five, a hundred, or however many more there are, please subscribe to this channel, give us a like, share it amongst your friends, and uh, I will keep making more of these weird videos, which will be about chainsaws and tree climbing, and there'll be reviews, and there will be me on job sites, and me reacting to stuff like this when I've got coronavirus and I can't go outside and work like normal. Um, again, hope you guys really enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you guys all soon. Thanks very much.